Rizzo's Spectrum Vodka. Have you had a moment to look into that little opportunity I told you about on Roseway? You don't hurry up. Someone will get to snooping around there before you do. What's that? Speak up now. What'd you turn up? My stars, what a find. Fine picking like this deserves an equally fine payout. Go on, dearie, and don't spend it all in one place. Peaches and cream, if that isn't the most handsome bit of lethal engineering I've seen all week. That'll go for a tidy sum of bits. A shame you didn't visit old Gladys first. That would have fetched a good price. I may have thrown in a patch of my famous sugar cookies just to sweeten the deal. If Auntie Cleo's exporting wraps from Monarch, golly me, someone's going to be in the soup when they get caught. positive honest to goodness can't say I wasn't hoping for more but I suppose it can't be helped law bless you for doing the legwork sweetie don't forget your pal Gladys now you can come visit anytime fantastic do be careful with it dear as these keys tend to be a tad hard to acquire you should have a chat with Lilia Hagen in the sublight offices. She's a dear. You'll love her. Now, was there anything else? What do you want, then? My hard-earned wisdom? Anytime, sweetheart. Cannibals, salt... Rizzo's Lemon Slap. Slap your whole family tonight. Well, well, well. What fine treasures might await us in here? I don't say this lightly, but that is a work of sheer universal beauty.
Make this conversation worth my time, Captain. Sure is. Welcome aboard, Contractor. One of my guys in Stellar Bay has a lead on some high-grade salvage, but he went dark before he could spill the goods. We arranged a drop at the Saltuna Warehouse's loading dock. Find whatever he left there and take it to Fallbrook. My gal Catherine will be expecting you. When the board pulled out of Monarch, they buried or sealed anything they couldn't carry off-world. Apparently, one of Catherine's teams uncovered an abandoned lab with full tanks of Alta Vitae gas. It's exactly one million bits per cubic meter. Before you get too excited, the only thing rarer than Alta Vitae gas is a reliable buyer. Dangerous stuff. Acid for the nucleon in your cells. It's no good to anyone outside of a lab. But it can be a lot of fun, if you don't mind the possibility of rewiring your body on an atomic level. You and I have different notions of fun, Dr. Fenhill. Now, get going. Catherine will brief you on the details when you check in with her at Fallbrook. One last thing. When you're on the job, keep a pair of eyes on the back of your head. Understood? Don't go looking for anything, except salvage. Just watch out. You'll do fine. Probably nothing to worry about. Probably. Good enough for me. We are not caught in the law. I am not keen on another long-term penitentiary assignment. Welcome back, Captain. Now that you have acquired a nav key to Stellar Bay, would you like me to contact Dr. Wells? Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Come see me in my lab. I'll answer any questions you have. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Initiating initialization sequences. Greetings, customer! This SAM unit is unable to locate your registered information. Would you like to register your SAM? Registering new owner, Captain. SAM units live to clean and clean to live. Destination reached. Scylla. 
Please avoid damage. Do yourself. Scylla. No laws, no lines, and a whole lot of guns. I love this place. Can't walk five meters without stubbing your toe in a loose rock here. to shoot me down if you wanted an autograph. Shut up now and you might get out of this alive. Can we hurry this up? I want that ship gutted before the primals find us. Just shrugging off my injuries as I stroll away from another flaming impact crater. Also detecting. Tremendous work, friend. Here I was readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Why does that sound familiar? Uh ah, -uh, it's Ellie. Excellent timing. Hello, Ellie. What a pleasure it is to see your sparkling beauty in this barren waste. It's Dr. Fenhill. I certainly know his ex-crew. Mostly from the operating table. I've probably seen more of them than he has. How cruel you are. I distinctly remember a special party at the Lost Hope Bar on Groundbreaker where we... We did not. Oh, fine. But we almost... Keep going, and you're gonna see how good this automech is at picking up teeth. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. Increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. The one and only. Wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these Automex are coming, and sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Yes, well, I shan't. Give Wanda my chilliest regards. And farewell to you, dear Dr. Fenhill. I trust I'll see you next I find myself on the Groundbreaker. You'd better hope not. You're back. Not that I missed you. I assure you. We've arrived at the Groundbreaker.
TNT near Maple Grove. It's near the Trinity Crest. Well, well, Dr. Fenhill. It's not often I see you on this side of Sick Bay. I make it a point not to get shot, and when I do, I can usually take care of the mess myself. It'd be nice to have you in here patching people up, not just blowing them apart. I respect what you're doing here, but you know I'm not ready to settle down. It's not you, it's me. Have it your way then. You always do. Now, about your friend here. Were I a gambling woman, I'd wager you're responsible for my mechanical safe return. I can't thank you enough. Crew members Ellie and Max are engaged in a heated discussion in the kitchen. Destination reached. Scylla. Do return in one piece. Captain. never even had a bar. No wonder it's abandoned. Looks abandoned, but looks can be deceiving.
Did you bring me anything? New parts? Last weekend's crossword puzzle? Preferably not already. Sold out this time? I'll admit, the station's in better shape than I expected it to be. Perfect. Perfect spot for some peace and quiet. Different artist, Captain. to show me how to do that. My comm center already got an update ping from the backup relay. I trust everything went smoothly. Thanks. Hmm, that's odd. The only messages in the queue are encrypted ones. Looking at the transmission logs, the relay hasn't received a single unencrypted message in the past 36 months. Must be on account of some new security red tape. Well, whatever's the cause, the board and the Earth Minister will see it sorted. Thanks again for saving my derriere. I secured quite the payment authorization for you from Chief Jun Lei. 
Try not to spend it all in one place. <clears throat> Hello? Can you hear me? Does this work? I'm just securing my ongoing experiments. And securing myself. Mind the mess. Uh, I haven't had a visitor since... Uh, in fact, I've never had a visitor. Aha! I see you found my portable molecular compression device, better known as a shrink ray. Find a target, point, shoot. Your target will shrink down into a manageable size, whereupon you may commence beating them to a pulp. Feel free to try it on a marauder sometime. Oh, thank the law. Your skin hasn't spontaneously changed color. Potential side effect of the revival process. Very rare, but uh, you never know. Right. Welcome to my little uh, habitation, such as it is. I've got uh, caffeinoids, cysty bits, if you're into that sort of thing. So, welcome. Make yourself at home. My secret hideout is your secret hideout. Not at all, my intrepid accomplice. I should thank you for tolerating my somewhat brusque manner. I only regret that I couldn't save more of your fellow settlers, what with being hunted by the board and emptying my supply of necessary chemicals. Of course. What's on your mind? It's not you. I uh, do experiments in that room. Some of them get quite scientific. The unexpected is to be treasured, but uh, from a safe distance. Regardless, it's quite comfortable in here, you know. I have my beans, have my caffeine. Reviving you from hibernation was my greatest accomplishment. Your odds of survival were a mere 28%. Hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? I knew it. See, I made what you call a logical deduction. You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-road traffic, us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even going to give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that, it's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. 
Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls, mostly. Oh, sure. They make Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Ah, the nostalgic stench of home. Can't say I miss the day-to-day -day of living in Edgewater. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tossball poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? I couldn't really say I'm just a fan of the game. But the fancy collector types say the more people see these things, the less valuable they are. And I figure my poster's been passed around by more than a few people by now. Thanks a bunch! Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. laws. Can't a man enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace? What I am doing, ma'am, is enjoying the moment. It's so rare that I can seize one apart from the jabbering masses of this wretched place. This law's forgotten town. Cut off from the rest of the colony. Removed from any culture. I recall when Stellar Bay was a proper board-affiliated town with regular shipments of Auntie Cleo's best and all the cereals. Before Sanjar took over MSI and got us all booted. Days of consumption and culture. When we weren't squabbling with the iconoclasts for lack of better things to do. Look. You're making me melancholy. Is there something you wanted? What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our life. And the little bastard's slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's, it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the, tell the blood from the mud. But I gotta get in there, get right in that baby rap stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I'd... Shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring... Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? Ooh, <laughs> Charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass, wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's. Let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. 
You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Oh, you want information for nothing. Very well. I am no match for your nego nego you yammering. Here's how to get to Devil's Peak. Go south, along the road, not the river. Look for the mountain with devil horns. Watch out for raps and mana swans and marauders, and sulfur pits, and you know it'd really be safer if I went with you. You want to reconsider sobering me up? Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month, on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Well, well. Isn't often we see new folk in Stellar Bay. First drinks on me, stranger. Enjoy. If you plan on sitting through Nioka's stories, you might could use a few. I could use a few and tell it them myself. Now what can I do for you? Anyone who spends any amount of time in this bar is bound to get to know Nioka, on account of her being here so often herself. And I don't mean that unkindly. Anyone who's rid us of as many beasts as you have is entitled to a few drinks. Something else I can do for you? Not since Amber Heights. These days we have more leaving than coming. Off to join the Iconoclasts or some such. But it had a fancy ring to it. Name's the first advertising anyone sees, after all. Nope. But a man can dream. Get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Oh, a shame. I'd been saving a bottle of iceberg aged whiskey for an occasion like this. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, 
Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for 10 years now. now. We've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Exactly what I would have said, if I'd been paying attention. You talk like Graham. Freedom always sounds nice, doesn't it? It makes a rather pretty slogan. But if you sit down and tally up the costs, how you provide for yourself in the absence of aid, how you protect yourself from a hostile galaxy, it starts to lose its shine. Exactly. Intellectualism fuels the train to mankind's future. But the tracks the train runs on are forged from practicality. What? Yes, it's as though the good vicar has plucked the very words from my brain. Well, Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. Returning to the board is your only chance if you hope to survive here on Monarch. That doesn't mean it'll be easily achievable. Indeed not. No worthwhile plan was ever simple. That's what I always say. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true. Our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach. And the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. Never realized fighting the bureaucracy could be this interesting. It is quite the rush. I'll need to gather some supplemental materials, but I mustn't get ahead of myself. You do tend to do that. The Bolt 52 will be in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Saying what which way? That's just what it's called. It's supposed to stand for something, but I forget what. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. He and his followers call themselves the Iconoclasts. Lawless anarchists, all of them. If anyone on Monarch deserves the reputation the board's pinned on us, it's them. I will admit, I am keen to meet their leader. Well, be careful what you wish for. Graham has a habit of ruining everything, and everyone, around him. It isn't just that they drain our people and resources. Every radical act they commit cements Halcyon's image of us all as destructive rebels, and pushes us further from the rest of the colony. He's lucky the board doesn't take him seriously enough to keep more than a few UDL gunships patrolling Monarch. An Earth Directorate assault cruiser would change his tune. It's almost a shame we haven't seen one around Monarch in a long while.
I've asked myself the same thing many times. Especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. Back then, it was known as Terra 1. As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. And how did that work out? Most regard Monarch as a lost cause. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. No, they laughed in our faces and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. Yes, some of us stayed behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. Must have pissed off some real big suits to get stuck with that. On the contrary, I wrote lots of very important reports on behalf of top MSI officials before I was able to achieve this position. I moved forward with our planned reforms as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Without the board, chaos would overtake the system. Working within the established order isn't a principle to snub one's nose at, Captain. If you can't beat him, might as well join him and reach into their pockets. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. I've discovered it's much easier to negotiate from a position of power. And I don't mean to leave MSI or its people at a disadvantage. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here. And who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. What can I do for you? Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. 
I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptid on acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. So I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. Would you? I'd appreciate that so much. Uh, maybe don't tell him I wanted you to ask. Just that you met this really nice lady named Celia, and she seemed... Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. Rap mask and canid Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a woman who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that raptodon acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Nice of you to say. I like her too. And I gotta admire anyone with her passion for canid hides. But you don't have to butter me up. Now I see what Celia was talking about. This guy almost reminds me of Erion. Who? An old acquaintance from the Groundbreaker. Real piece of work. That's mighty kind of you to say. But we were talking about what a lucky gal Celia is. Anyone who can afford such a fine collection of mantisaur claws has it pretty good. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong, I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady, always talks nice and slow so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Oh, I will. Now I've just got to figure out which jumpsuit I'm wearing and how I'm fixing my hair, or maybe I should go with a casual look? Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you. Velma seemed out of sorts to you. She's always cranky. No, I mean... If Velma's capable of running the warehouse, she can certainly pick up her own cap. Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. Quite the bedside manner, lady. Well, it's so rare I get the pleasure of new company. 
What can Auntie Abigail do for you? And what a helpful young lady you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Whiskey helps, too. Please leave medical advice to the professionals. Now, dearie, who's this pickup for? I'm so sorry, but with the iconoclasts and the marauder filth chasing away what little trade we get, I'm afraid I have to reserve my supply for Stellar Bay residents. Our reserves have gotten so low, I've even had to start locking the supply room upstairs. Isn't it a shame what some people will do to get a little extra? Isn't it just? I'd make an exception for you if I could, my little cherub. Is there anyone else needing a special pickup from Auntie Abigail? Don't blame me if I puke on your shoes. Aren't you a saucy thing? Now, I may not be a fresh young thing anymore, but with age comes experience, dearie. Much as I'd love to, my rheumatism is especially fierce at the moment, and I'm all out of my medicine. But I'd hate to send you away empty-handed. You were here for Caffeinoid, weren't you? Who's it for? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI. Contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie. I don't like to pry. I'm afraid not. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Well, this certainly isn't worth my good health. I'll get you a dose, but I'll have you know. I'm very disappointed in you. There, and good riddance. That's the last help you're getting from Abigail Edwards. If Velma's capable of running the warehouse, she can... Ah, the Charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? Says someone who's never had any fun. Exactly. See, I'm glad someone on your crew's got some sensi sensible... Got her head on straight. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh... There it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. That was fast. I gotta see about stalking some on the ship. You be careful. 
The first one's free. After that, they'll offer you gainful employment. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. Mighty big gun you got there. I'm looking forward to seeing you use it. I don't know what the game's like on Terra 2, but out here, the danger.